This week, I put Donkey Kong Country on this teeny tiny little console. Well, not quite in the console, it's what's inside of it. Can I get it open? Oh, this thing is like jammed, but... Gosh, inside, <laughs> there's a Raspberry Pi. This was my first time ever actually doing something of this nature on a Raspberry Pi. And the way I did this was with RetroPie. Also sidebar, I like to accessorize. So I got the matching keyboard and mouse. I recently filmed an unboxing for that. So you should check that out. Anyways, back to this build. So I technically already had Raspberry Pi OS on a micro SD card, but I wanted to migrate that over to an NVMe drive. I needed the speed and because this was my first time doing anything with an actual game on a Raspberry Pi, I figured it couldn't hurt. Now, because I wanted to be extra and migrate everything from the micro SD to the NVMe drive, I needed a hat for it. The case that I originally bought that looks literally like the one that I used actually did not have the NVMe hat. However, it does come with one depending on the version that you get. So just keep that in mind if you decide to use an NVMe drive instead of a micro SD card. Ordered that, put that together, gave me a little bit of trouble doing that, but I ended up figuring it out anyway. Once I had that settled, I then needed to migrate the Raspberry Pi OS from the micro SD card over to the NVMe drive. ChatGPT absolutely lied to me the first go round. Well, I don't know if it lied to me, but it gave me all these commands and I ended up getting stuck. Then I asked it again and it turns out you can actually just do it from the menu, click a couple options, select to do the transition or the transfer and then you're done. I don't know why it didn't tell me that in the first place. Once I had that resolved, Oh, I was in business. I was good and ready to go. Now the thing about Raspberry Pi 5 and RetroPie is that there is no RetroPie image available for Raspberry Pi 5, or at least it's not supported. However, you can still get RetroPie on a Raspberry Pi 5. What you need to do instead is actually run a couple commands to actually get it on there. And I think it must be pulling from like a GitHub repo or something. I forget, I'm sure I put it on the screen here. In any case, once you run those commands, it'll do the install. Y'all, the install is long, like seriously long, like 20 minutes long. I didn't realize it would take that long. So I had to take a couple of breaks from actually recording that part for you all because who wants to sit here for 20 minutes watching something install, right? But once I got it on, oh, it was good. I was great. Now came the next thing, which was getting the ROM files for Donkey Kong Country onto the device. First and foremost, I didn't know what the heck ROM files were until I had to start digging a little bit deeper into this project. That's also where ChatGPT came into play. So what's a ROM file? Okay, so this game, there's files in here. There are files inside of here, right? And there's an actual tool that you can get to like connect it into it, get the files or extract the files out from here so you can have them on your computer. Went looking for the tool, come to find out it's like sold out. Like that's a thing. It's a known thing that this thing is just like sold out and it's so popular, but it's not even that expensive. So I'm like, well, how else am I going to get this? Then I started digging around to see where on the internet can I find ROM files? And that's where things get a little tricky. Full disclaimer, I'm not a lawyer, okay? I do wanna say this though. Technically, in order for you to get the ROM files for a game, you need to actually own the game itself, all right? And then you can extract them like I mentioned, or you can download them from a place that has them. Again, not legal advice. However, I ended up ordering the game through GameStop so I can at least have it in my possession. And then I found a website where I can actually download the ROM files for Donkey Kong Country for the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. And that's how I got them. So once I got the files themselves, what I ended up doing was actually SSHing from my MacBook Pro, which is where I had the files downloaded. And I just transferred them over to the Raspberry Pi. Shout out to my SSH video if you wanna know how to SSH into your Raspberry Pi from another computer. In any case, got the files there, put them in the right folder, and then I was good and golden until I wasn't. Because when I tried to boot my Raspberry Pi with RetroPie running, it said, absolutely not, ma'am. We're gonna flash a little screen for you and that's it. And that's literally what it did. So after a bit of troubleshooting, 
I don't know what the problem is. I still don't know what the problem is to this day, but what I do know is that I got it working. And once I got it working, I was actually able to try it out and play Donkey Kong Country. However, before that, you gotta actually map your controller input. So because I love to accessorize, I obviously got the matching controller for the keyboard, the mouse, as well as the RetroPie. And so with the keyboard, or I guess with the controller, you have to do the input mapping. And for whatever reason, it kept like flipping over or like, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It kept skipping over a certain input, which was annoying. I don't know what's wrong with that, but I got it all working. I gave it a try. Here's the first gameplay. Okay. Come on, Diddy Kong. I need that. Oh, that's my man, Diddy. All right, Diddy. Oh, sh I don't want that. Oh, sh I didn't know he can come down there. Do I recommend doing this project? Absolutely. It doesn't even matter if you're brand new to Raspberry Pi because I am still new to Raspberry Pi. I'm not new to programming, but there's not much programming involved in doing this sort of project. Check out my blog post on beginner friendly Raspberry Pi projects if you're a beginner. But like I said, this has been pretty great to do. And now I got something to play in between my meetings on the work days. Okay, I actually do work in between those meetings, but whenever I need a break, I have something to play. All right, subscribe for the next build. I have another fun one coming up soon. Until next time, you all take care.